This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the president and CEO of Ali Anza Minerals, Mr. Jason Weber. Jason, how are you? I'm doing uh, very well, Gerardo. How about you? I'm doing well. It's a busy time. Silver is flirting with $30. Gold is flirting with $2,000 again. Um, you have assays pending that I know we'll chat about briefly here in a bit, but you had some news. The last time you and I spoke, we talked about how interesting a project Twin Canyon was, and you've now expanded that project. Can we talk about what led to the move and then and, and the new position here? And um, then we'll talk next steps. Yeah, I th if you remember when we uh, we acquired the project, one of the um, one of the key sort of pieces of the puzzle for us was the uh, potential for that mineralization that's been uh, identified at the Charlene Mine, the old uh, the old uh, attic that the, the uh, plaster miner had been working. We we wanted to make sure that was not the extent of uh, of the gold mineralization there and while there were some high grade numbers you know eight nine grams multi-gram material recovered from underground uh, for us the potential really was how big could this be and the stratigraphy that hosts that mineralization how widespread is that uh that distribution and uh so we uh, embarked on a soil geochemical program testing that horizon and we got gold and soil anomalies where we hoped we would see them hmm. and so that gave us the uh that gave us the the confidence to say to ourselves okay this thing could be bigger than than just the charlene mine and uh, uh we better you know uh, tie up some of that ground that uh that uh, has potential now so that led to the to the staking and that had always been sort of part of the plan is you know do these soils see what we got see if it is more widespread stake some more ground and then uh and now we can start to uh, target new areas uh, on the property to, to test for their gold uh, mineralization. And for those not familiar, the Charlene mine was a small underground gold mine, correct? Yeah, uh, a placer miner had uh, been working it. I guess it was mostly sort of in the 80s, but it dates back to the sort of 1950s. Uh, I think him and his father had worked on it. And they, yeah, a small operation, they would... Uh, They'd mine a little bit, truck it back to their uh, um, uh, mill that they had in their backyard. The, the sandstone that hosts the gold is, is is really friable; it breaks up really easily. So they just put it in the back of a of an old cement truck with some river gravel, <laughs> turned it, and it would crush the sandstone, and then they would sluice the gold out of that. And uh, you know they claimed that they were they were getting you know, multi-gram gold uh, out of uh, what they were mining. So. Um, yeah, it was a, a neat little operation, but uh, we really wanted to make sure that this had potential to be much bigger. Absolutely. When do you plan on getting the team back in the field? Uh, actually, they uh, just came out of the field again. Uh, they uh, went back to prospect some of the soil geochemicals that we identified and were able to find um, uh, sandstone that uh, resembled that uh, of the Charlene mine. So, uh, this this is a bit of an odd uh, odd project in that the the gold mineralization seems to be associated with bitumen, uh, which is thought to be a, a part of a, a petroleum system. And we were seeing that the the sandstone gets a distinctive spotted texture to it, uh, really bleached, and then these bitumen spots, black bitumen spots in it. And uh, they were seeing that in the vicinity of some of these soldier coming on. So that was that was promising. And uh, the next step for us would be to go uh, back into the uh, Charlene mine itself and um, do some detailed work looking at the uh, structural trends that uh, may be exposed underground to identify what might be the controls on, on the gold mineralization. So with that, we would uh, map the structure and then do some detailed uh, sampling, which would then help us when we go to these uh, outboard anomalies, we can identify what structure, what structural orientation uh, we might be targeting when, when we test those anomalies. Sounds good. Got to ask you about Nevada. Everybody is eagerly anticipating assays. I know it's a busy time for the labs. Um, can you provide us with a brief update there? Yeah, we're, uh, it's the, 
it's been a long wait here for this, especially the second batch of results, uh, which would be holes four, five, and six uh, from the horse thief program. And uh, they are still not uh, available. We don't have any uh, results back yet from, from those holes. So uh, it's uh, obviously it's frustrating for us. We had hoped that we would get results back in time to be planning uh, potentially second phase program, but um, the way the uh, the progress that the lab is going, it's uh, that, it's making that task a bit difficult. So, hoping to have results out in early September here, but um, you know, it's really it's really out of my hands at this point. Well, let's hope it's worth the wait. It's amazing what a discovery of significance does for people's memory, as far as you know, assays taking longer than you like, right? Yeah, yeah, let's hope. <laughs> Sounds good, Jason. Anything else you'd like to add before I let you go? Yeah, we're just uh, in the planning phases of, uh, of a, a full drill program up at Holding in uh, in the uh, Keno Hill District. So that would go um, probably starting sometime in October, which a lot of people might think, wow, that's kind of late for the Yukon. But, uh, of course, we, we have good road access into the project, and uh, if we pick our the areas we drill, I think we're going to have a – uh, a good uh, a good sort of month to six week program up there this fall that uh, get us back into some of the areas like Bighorn and, and the Middlecoff zone where we had good results last year and we can we can follow those up with uh, drill tests this year. Good stuff, Jason. Looking forward to all of that. Thank you. Thank you, Gerardo.